Today, I demonstrate how to advance your writing mission to insert tables used for your professional report. You have seen the Tech Tools for Learner Success video number 4 about using Style Heading 7 when you labeled your automatically numbered figures. Hey, that works great! So now you step into advancing this to Style Heading 8 as applied to this table heading. We work with another document mechanics study used in natural resource ecology as students prepare their second term report section on climate at Kamiak Butte County Park. This series is based on this landscape, but the strategies we use can be applied to any land resource where investigations and processing of data can lead to understanding. Your report is where you prove it. For this assessment, we look for data collected by Oregon State University as they create record arrays of daily weather measurements throughout the continental United States and parts of Canada. Their data are all collected in reference to the locations where observations are made. This puts physical places into the realm of a variable to determine climate from weather. We step into the PRISM dataset to collect our raw information. A different video steps you through the process of collecting data from a location you determine. Hey, we identify the physical site location and time span we want. This sets the stage for you to analyze it. These are the steps you go through to make sense out of a collection of stochastic numbers. But remember, having a big data array is meaningless unless you can find a significance through those figures. For these records, we investigate precipitation and temperature beginning in 1895 and continuing through present time. Our collection of highest interests starts by looking at monthly information to make summaries throughout the years. You can see the arrays showing minimum, average, and maximum temperatures by month collected on this Kamiak Butte site alongside precipitation. These begin showing as a figure with opposing vertical axes, one showing temperature and the other showing three measures of precipitation. All are linked by time on the horizontal axis. The table you present in the written report needs to precede the figure. First came the data and your analysis, then comes the figure you created. Do not show the entire data array. I suggest you summarize it to the level needed to make the chart. This can be displayed in the table of 5 columns and 14 rows. And there is a tidy tool you can use within MS Word to make a perfect table. <laughs> what makes a perfect table? This necessitates some additional understanding. You may be tempted to make a screen image from your data array in MS Excel and paste that table-looking chart into your Word document, and then call it a table. Other times, you might place your cursor in place and use the tab key to move your cursor to predetermined locations and make a table-looking arrangement of columns and numbers. Sure, it looks nice, but this takes you much more time than needed, and in the end, it generally looks, hmm, sloppy. Yeah, seriously. You can do it better than this by making a real MS Word table. Begin by going to the place in your Word document where the table will be presented. Remember, you need to write about the data and the analysis you did first, as you reference Table 1 in your report. After that, you present the table which is automatically numbered, just as we did when we made the figures. Do not float your table or its label over text. Uh -uh. Keep everything in line with text. Place your cursor at the beginning of the line where that table will reside. Guide your mouse to the Insert ribbon on the Tables panel. Click on the downward targeted chevron to outline the array of five columns wide. You really do not need to select the number of rows yet. The limit of this applet is to create a maximum table size with eight rows, but adding more is super easy and fast. For now, you can create that five columns and two row table. It is created to completely set a width matching your document's margins. 
This is the start. You will use the tab key on your keyboard to jump from one cell to the next horizontal cell. When you get to the end of a row and strike the tab key, MS Word will create a new row with the exact same settings for the one before. This is how you can walk your table to the full size you need. With four rows made, you can do a little housekeeping. Use your mouse to select all the cells in the first row. Do not select the space after the last cell. Just select the cells themselves. Look here to see what I mean. Using your mouse and those selected cells, right-click on any selected cell and find Merge Cells, and left-click on it. This makes those five columns for this row into one column and one row. This will be the header for this table where your table's label will reside. It is part of the table, and it will be made to stay together. Now, for now, just type the title, uh, Label Here. For the next row, this will become the top of the data you present. It will carry the needed headers from the left to right. Type month, precipitation, min temperature, average temperature, max temperature. In the next row, we place the data you calculated from the prism array where you currently hold them in Excel. Save your MS Word file. <laughs> I do that a lot to make sure I do not lose my efforts. Leaving MS Word open but minimized, I will open my MS Excel file where I calculated these data. I find the sheet used to analyze the array. Take a close look at the arrangement of these data. The first column is named month, then precipitation, and three temperatures. The summary is in good form, and I can select the data cells without the labels and without those columns which were used to link the numbered months 1, 2, 3 to the array. Leave those numbers alone and concentrate only on the named months and the data they present. With these selected, I control C to copy. Those data are now sitting in my computer's RAM memory. Leave this file open and switch to the MS Word file, which is also still open. Put your mouse in the upper left cell where these data array will reside. Make sure your table has five columns and 12 additional rows. Use the tap key at the end of the last cell to make the size right. I use the mouse to left click and drag across the cells I want to populate. Drag across the top row to the right and down the columns to the bottom. Do a mental verification of what is open in relation to what is copied in memory. First column is named month, then precipitation, three temperatures. Yeah, looks good. On the keyboard, hold Control V to paste. There it is. Notice, I did not recommend you just copy and paste the cells directly from Excel into a blank place in the Word document. I recommend against that practice for a document you'll send to others who are not on your computer. Well, the MS Office handshake works well when the files are all on your local machine, it fails miserably when you send your MS Word file away to someone else. The handshake will try to refresh from the Excel file each time it is opened. In other words, when it is sent away and the new user tries to see the data, it will fail, and your reader will not see those great analyses you made. Your table is now created in MS Word and placed where it needs to shine. Okay, so save your data. There are a few more important steps to take. The first is to engage the style heading 8 to serve as your table heading style. You created the great series of Heading 7 for your figures, so now you know how to make sure Heading 7 shows, and when you did that, Heading 8 appeared. Place your cursor on the label line. Do not select any text, just place it in the paragraph. Slide your mouse to the Home ribbon, Styles panel, and find that Heading 8 label. Right-click on it and select Modify. You see the quick settings for font size and color, but you now want to look to the lower left side of the applet and select the format. On this list, scroll down to click on Numbering. As you enter this applet, you will see the callout for Define New Number Format. You see the number selection area at the top, and 1, 2, 3 looks fine. On the next line down, you see the hyperlink looking number 1. Click on this line to place the cursor. Now use your keyboard arrow to move this 
cursor to the farthest left location it can occupy. Here you will type table, capital T, space after. Do not change the shaded number 1 found here. This is looking right, and you will select OK. On the revised panel, you will see the numbering format where your table heading numbers appear. Select it and click OK. One last time and you click OK and the return to the data input area. You see it now. Your table label is automatically numbered to 1. You need a real label now made for this chart. I type Kamiak Butte Climate from Monthly Data 1895 to 2021. That is representative of those data. Now I need to cite my source. With your cursor at the end of this label and before the period, you direct your mouse to the References ribbon, to the Citations and Bibliography label. Click on the Insert Citation Downward Pointing Chevron and select Add New Source. On this applet, you first tell the type of citation you will make. This is for the PRISM database found on a website. There is no named person for this database. Instead, select the Corporate Author radio box and fill in PRISM Climate Group as the author. When you go to the PRISM website, you find the Facts section which includes the question of how to cite these data. Looking at it again, you see all the data you need to make. Remember this URL address to place into the Citation Manager for your citation. Make sure you indicate the date you pulled your data. Make this personally professional. Populate all those cells and select OK. There is one more citation you need to make. It is about you as the professional who analyzed these data. You are the one who collected the data array, who entered those summarizing formulas, and compiled exactly these data. Although you are the one who is publishing this report, you need to claim authorship of these data array results. For this one, the path of multiple citations may not be completely obvious. Place your cursor inside the citation you already made. Do not select any characters, just place it inside the citation on the page. Now, go back to the References ribbon on the Citations and Bibliography label and again to the Insert Citation Downward Pointing Chevron to select Add New Source. This now familiar screen opens for you to make the claim of your work and in this case I select Miscellaneous. Populate these data cells with your name, the title of this data array. I call it Kamiak Butte Climate. The year is now, which for this show is 2023, January 5, in Pullman, Washington, USA. The publisher is the reason for making this chart, which is WSU Natural Resource Ecology. Looks right, so click OK. Now you see this citation has been inserted with a semicolon between the two citations for this single element. It is common to have multiple citations for each element you present in your report. Now this is how to make them APA correct. As you review this, you will see the header is automatically numbered, the label name is accurate, and the sources are cited. Yeah, perfect! Now take your attention back to the place in your report where you first manually referenced it as Table 1. This is showing within the parenthetical brackets to inform the reader where your reference data resides. Remember, there is no need to write look at Table 1. Mm -mm. The parenthetical brackets deliver the address reference. Select the words Table 1 and delete them while leaving the parentheses in place. With your cursor in between them, Direct your mouse to the References ribbon, to the Captions label. Click on the cross-reference item. Okay, here you see the cross-reference applet with the reference type looking for numbered items and the insert reference to paragraph number. Those are automatic, so look at the box below to show all numbered items in this report. You need to scroll through these and find Table 1 with your label showing. Select this and then click Insert. The applet does not immediately disappear, as you can make additional address references as needed. For this exercise, click on the upper right corner with the X to close the applet. 
look at your address reference in the text to refer the reader to the table you made. <laughs> there it is. It is hypertext, which will be updated as you insert other tables or when you copy this report into the collection of other reports with similar features numbering of your figures, tables, and even your equations you included in the written report. Please remember to save your file again. This is looking good. The next step addresses the table which may be placed in the location where a page break will appear. It happens, and when it does, the bottom of this table may be left without its label, citation, or column headers. Mm -mm. We can guarantee that will never happen to your tables. Guide your screen to show the top of this table. Using your mouse, guide it to the left side of the table. I mean, really move it off the table area until you see the cursor turn to an angled arrow pointing to the right. Left click to select the top row and drag down until you have selected the automatically numbered row and the row of column data headers. These are the columns we tell the program to replicate on the additional pages where this table will appear. Two super ribbons appear in the upper right side of the ribbons area. These became available when you created the table. Now we use them. With those two selected rows, take your mouse to the layout super ribbon. On the far left side of this table panel, click on the properties item. This opens a new applet of five tabs at the top. Select the Row tab. You see three radial boxes and the bottom one is repeat as header row at the top of each page. Huh. Click on that one. This is the magic that guarantees that any page break will port those header rows to the top of the continuing table. Click OK and this table is one more step closer to perfection. We now look into your list of tables. You need to set this one up to use those great style heading 8 entries you created. As you put in your guiding menus, you start with the table of contents, then list of figures, list of tables, list of equations, and if you created the acronyms used, that list appears below the ones I listed here. All directional menus are on the page numbered IIIIII. You place a section break next page after the last menu item, but above the beginning of your written content. That is to have your mouse in position, click on the layout ribbon in the page setup area to click on the breaks chevron. Find the section break separator and menu item named section break next page. Click on this and the new double line break appears. This is where your initial page numbering from above can be different from the page numbering below. With your cursor above this line, you will navigate to the Insert ribbon, to the far right panel named Header and Footer. Click on the chevron named Page Number. On this menu appearing, select Format Page Numbers. Select the Number Format toggle to see options for the type of page numbering. Find and select IIIIII. Click OK. And then the numbering for all the initial pages is set. Place your cursor on the area below your section break lines. You are in the content area, so now you can make those pages number as 1, 2, 3. Repeat the series I showed you a moment ago, but this time select number format accordingly. You click OK, and again you set the theme. We are now set to establish that list of tables in the organizational section. It is common to have the list of tables showing after the list of figures. Place your cursor below the list of figures, but not within the format text of it. Go into a blank area of the empty space. It is in line with text. Type list of tables, and in the paragraph ribbon, go to the styles panel and select heading 2. It is created, and in the next line below it, navigate your mouse to the references ribbon. On the far right panel, see Table of Contents to click on the downward pointing chevron. At the very bottom of this list, find and select Custom Table of Contents. This opens a new applet where you can use the power of the style sheets I tell you to create in this list of tables using Heading 8. Deselect the radio box titles, use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. Make sure radio boxes are selected for Show Page Numbers and Write Align Page Numbers. 
navigate to the lower right area to select Options button. This opens yet another controller showing styles on the left column and TLC levels on the right. You see the check marks for headings 1, 2, and 3 on the left with the corresponding numbers on the right column. Take your mouse to the right column and deselect numbers 1, 2, and 3. Delete them. Scroll down to the list until you see heading 8 appear on the left side column. Put your mouse in the matching right side column and put the number 1 in the heading 8 row. Click OK for this sub applet, then click OK to make it go away. Now you see a perfect list of tables created based on the table you made. Yeah, you need to know that these tables all need to be updated before you pass your document to another reader. If you were going to print your report, this would be automatically updated. But oftentimes, these are not printed. They are just submitted to the learning management system where your report is being submitted for an assignment. It might be emailed within your organization. If you do not update these before they are sent away, the organizational lists you made will be wrong. You worked too diligently for that to happen. So, take the four more seconds to right-click on your lists and select Update Field. I always tell it to update them all. It takes one second, so why not? Have you saved your document recently? <laughs> Do it again. We keep working through this series of professional document preparations. We have talked about your cover page, title page, list of figures, and list of tables. There are more you can integrate into your professional reports, and believe me when I say, your professional persona will elevate with meaningful content, as it is accompanied by a professional presentations. Think of this as going to an interview with a keen mind while wearing a sharp outfit. You would not show up to make a good impression with ratty hair and ripped pants. You are a package, so show yourself as a good package.